friends, thank you for coming back for another video. My name is Shauna Kay, and in this video, I'll be talking about kind of those winter blues and why it happens and what to do to kind of combat that. And of course, I incorporate a lot of different things in my life to combat the natural desire or the natural change in mindset that kind of produces more of a negative, depressed outlook in life. And that is purely based on things that are dying. You know, we're at a phase in the seasons where death comes, but it's required for rebirth, for the next season of fresh new life coming. But at the same time, a lot of people deal with depression during the fall and winter seasons because it's darker. Vitamin D is also, you know, clearly proven to help with being more positive and happy. There is some tests that have came out or some, some research that came out about people who live in the Pacific Northwest and how they tend to be more, or dealing with depression or anxiety because it's, pretty cloudy most of the time over here. But for me, my background is in California. I was born and raised in Cupertino, Apple headquarters in California up until I was 20. And then I left, ran away with this soldier boy, got married, traveled the world, lived in Europe, was just a dumbass. And I learned so much from so many mistakes but we ultimately settled down in the Pacific Northwest. And I remember the feeling I had when we relocated here and life started settling down specifically in this area. I remember, and this is before twilight, so a lot of people think of nice coziness because of twilight, but taking that out of the equation, there's just something beautiful and peaceful and mysterious about the Pacific Northwest. I love it. I've never been more happy since moving into this general area of the United States. It brings me like an excitement, a peace, some different perspective of, ex you know, exploring things that I never had while living in California with constant sun. It's the opposite. But I think a lot of Californians would agree with me that they feel the same way since moving up to the Pacific Northwest. So where does the study come from of those that are, you know, constantly here in this murky, misty, overcast place dealing with depression? It might be that they were born and raised here and this is all they know. So they really, need to get out, right, and explore different things. And I could see why they would look at it as a negative thing because this is all they know. Versus in California, when you're around sun constantly and you get to experience that first rain, I don't know about you, but a lot of us Californians just love and get excited about rain because we're just so used to the sun. It gets kind of boring. It gets kind of, you know, it's like constant party mindset sometimes that gets exhausting. And that really is the case for me and many people in my situation. We love the mysterious, dark, you know, misty, overcast, coralline type atmosphere because it has so much mystery to it. That's literally the word of the day. So much mystery. There's like so many different shapes and thoughts and things going on versus just sun and clear sky. That's it. You get sun, heat, sweat, clear sky. Just live in the water. That's your life. But when you come to the Pacific Northwest, there's clouds, there's formations, there's different types of rain. There's mushrooms growing, there's moist grass, there's trees that are you know, looking differently based on what's happening in the sky. There's chill wind, there's boring wind, there's rain that sh goes sideways, there's rain that just is like a mister. It's not really a raindrop, just like a cloud of rain that you walk through. There's just so many different things. 
than just the boring clear sky heat sun with no shapes, no shadows, no mystery, no exploring. And I think it's based on what you're born with and what you're used to. So for me, I've never had the issue with being depressed when fall or winter comes. Now, put me in snow that's freezing and I'll be depressed. That is where I get to the point where I'm like, oh my God, I'm tired of this. I'm constantly cold. It's just snow. It's like the equal of a hot summer day. It's too hot, it's too sunny, it's too cold, it's too white and boring and icy. But fall is that one in between that's just that mysterious brother in the middle. But there are things that I do to make sure I don't get down, depressed, and letting this dreary weather affect me. First thing is I love to become one with nature especially in the fall. I will sit on my front porch and I'll watch the rain. I'll cover up in a nice, you know, faux blanket while I, while my cheeks are chill, but like that combination is just perfect. I'll walk barefoot in the grass and get wet. I swear, what, something about interacting physically with nature is so freeing. It really brings you a different outlook in life. That's we're all from the ground. We're all from nature. It's like that's our common denominator for all of us. And it's like you feel that closeness once you do engage with nature. I utilize um, plants that help with the mood. It's the second thing. I love Kratom tea. I love uh, microdosing with shrooms. So utilizing what Mother Nature has provided during these kinds of seasons really helps. It's as if it's meant to help. Like, you know, a nice warm cup of tea isn't something that's super exciting if it's, you know, in the dead of summer, unless you're British. But for me and many of us, we love those warm, soothing teas when it's chilly and dreary outside. It's just something bonding and wonderful about it. And Kratom itself actually helps with your mood it helps give you some like a mo mental motivation and a rosier outlook in life. So it is the go-to tea if you want to get over any winter blues and fall, you know, depression that might arise in your life. So I would highly suggest you utilize Kratom tea. I have been on a microdosing journey that I will be sharing with you in a series of videos coming soon, but I'll tap on it here in this video Microdosing with shrooms is another enjoyable process that a person can have, especially when it consists of, you know, shroom hunting, when you're going through and you're foraging, foraging for shrooms and ginseng and all these other natural things that actually help with our mind and our bodies and souls. That just makes the whole act of, you know, what you're doing that much more enjoyable. So this is something that you found in the forest, fresh from the earth. You cook it, you drink it, you eat it, whatever. It's a beautiful thing. The third thing is I avoid sad things. I avoid negative things. So I don't tend to listen to sad, mopey music. I don't watch sad, depressing movies or documentaries. I avoid those kind of sad things during this time because it really works perfectly for this weather and it works perfectly with these times that are changing in the season. So it's best to avoid them at all cost, if, especially if you're an empath, which I'm an empath, doesn't take much to latch on to energies around me. So they, if they are sad, mopey, depressed energies, I will be down for the count. So I kind of avoid too much of that now as you get older and you harness your kind of empath powers that we do have it's a thing you can learn to know your limit and know what you can handle um, and just avoid going too all in down those rabbit holes and the last thing is to try to get some vitamin d i actually love going sun tanning especially during the winter and the fall it's the most beautifying feeling when you walk out of a sunbed and into rain and misty over cloudedness. It's beautiful, it's a beautiful feeling. I actually did a reel about it when I was coming out of the tanning bed. And for my mental health, <laughs> sun tanning is a key factor. 
And of course, time and long that you're in it plays a big part as well. But sun tanning, especially and getting that vitamin D is so important. There's red light beds that I utilize so much, the red lights and the benefits of that, especially with chronic pain and beauty and fine lines and all these kind of things. Look it up. I actually did a blog post about it. I could probably do a video on it as well, but there's amazing benefits with red light therapy as well. So utilizing all that really helps me enjoy the most of the season, especially before winter comes. Winter is when I need it the most because that's when it starts to tap in for me. Like, okay, I could use some spring, but fall is one of my favorite seasons. And I'm sure you know a lot of people that would say the same thing. And it really is all for the things that I mentioned in this video being the reason why so many fall in love with fall. But doing the things that I recommend is so important to make sure you continue to enjoy it. And again, I could definitely stress the Kratom tea and the vitamin D or red light therapy. Those two things during these seasons are huge. If you can do anything, do those things. You won't have to deal with too much depression or mood things. Of course, this is just my personal opinion always consult your physician, um, do your own research, but these are the things that have worked for me and you might want to try them out too with discretion. All right. Thanks for watching guys. I will see you in my next video.